have an idea in your mind of something you want, and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want, create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Hi, welcome back to the Idea Space. I'm Jen Liddy, your host. And remember that this is September and this month I'm talking about time. Why? Because everybody I know is craving more time back in their days, their weeks, their month. And frankly, like we like to think, oh, it's if we only had another planner, a better calendar, a better system. But I know that time mastery starts with what's going on in our minds. So today I'm sharing with you a story that'll help you think about what, where you can get more time and how to do it. So this takes me back to probably 2015 in my first business as the, one of the owners of the fitness studio. And I kept hearing from our clients things like, you know, it just doesn't feel the same without you here. And the guilt was setting in fast for me because I had started to put in place some boundaries for myself but I was really feeling guilty about these boundaries. And I was wondering if I had made a mistake by putting the boundaries in place. So for months, I had been working 5 a.m. when we opened until about 6.30 or 7. And I've talked about this before, like I would go home, eat dinner, but basically get right back to work. And this was, that was far too long to keep up that schedule. It was, you know, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years at that point that I was doing that. But the cracks in the armor were starting to show up and I was starting to get fried and crispy and I was really running on empty. And so I had hired help at the front desk and I hired wonderful people and we had trained them and they knew what they were doing and they were friendly and they were lovely. And the good news for me was I was no longer the face at the front desk. So when clients would come in and out, they would like deal with these other people who were very capable. But clients kind of started to tell us, Well, it's just not the same without you here. And so doubt started to settle in for me. And I kind of felt it in my gut. And the question that I started to ask was, did I deserve time off? And I I couldn't really answer that well. I was kind of like, um, yeah, everybody tells me I'm supposed to take time off. Everybody tells me as an owner, I shouldn't be here this many hours. But I felt very, very unsure about it. And I have seen this replicated with my own clients because they come to me the same way. Like, I don't know how to hand things off because this whole thing is on me. And it was hard to believe that I deserved time off because I felt so much guilt. But also, to be honest, I really loved greeting my clients. I really loved getting to know them. I loved seeing them come in and watching them leave and asking them what they, you know, how their experience was and getting feedback from them. Like, I loved giving our clients a high touch experience. But the question was are my talents best suited for the front desk? Yeah, I I mean, I could certainly do that job. It was a it was a job that like is right up my alley. It's like a bunch of tasks and it's personality, you know, personal being personable with people. But it was probably not the right space for me to spend most of my time, which is what I was doing. I was an owner, an owner and an operator. But with me at the front desk, I was basically doing the front desk job that somebody else could do. And that's running the daily business, but I was not doing the important job that only an owner could do, which was growing the future of our business. And so I was really not serving my business, which ultimately wound up not serving the client. So this guilt that I had is why many of my clients, and frankly, most women in business that I come across are overburdened. 
And I wonder if this sounds like you, do you feel overburdened? I mean, I talk to many women who want to be all the things to all the people. And it's likely we got into our current gigs because we really wanted to be deeply involved and affect change for the people that we love to work with. And, you know, business gets going and momentum builds. And then somehow one day we look around and we're like, oh my God, I I can't do it all anymore. And maybe we're doing it all, but we're not doing it all well. And that was me. So I was noticing that I had started to make my life harder than it needed to be because of guilt and because of stories that I had, right? Like I would say, oh yeah, I can cover that front desk shift. Let's, let's save a little bit of money and have me take it on. It's not a big deal. And then I would say like, oh yeah, I'll just take the towels home. It's no big deal. I'll just throw them in and fold them tomorrow. And it's not a big deal. And how often do you do that? How often do you like say yes to these little things that start to build up into a snowball? All the little things that you say yes to add up. And all the things that you've said yes to because it's easier in the moment add up. And when they add up, they become a weight on us. And so maybe for you, you've said yes to some annoying little thing because you know it made your kid very happy or it made your employees very happy. But now that little thing has turned into a giant assumption or a giant pattern. And in order to get out of it, you have to have a hard, uncomfortable conversation and unravel it and undo it. Now, most people hate this and it's terrible for them. So they'll avoid that and keep making their lives harder. I was doing that too. Sometimes we choose to do something that's like, I'm just going to take care of it because it's actually easier in the moment, but it winds up creating a pain in the ass situation in the long run. For example, like you're like, oh, I don't want to train my staff in how to write my copy for social media. So I'm just going to keep doing it. And eventually that becomes such a burden on you that you really resent it or feel burned out by it, or you just don't do it that well anymore. So Here's the thing. You might be unsure how to undo these little annoying things. These are the ways that we are making our lives harder and you can change it because if you don't change it, your time will keep slipping away from you. And I know because I've been there and the energy of trying to undo a pain in the ass thing, we tell ourselves it's exhausting. I just don't want to deal with it. So we keep taking care of it and we keep taking care of it. And we know in our heart that it's just a band-aid on the situation, but we really are not resolving the deeper wound here. And in fact, if you're just saying yes to things or doing too much or just taking care of things because you don't want to either have the hard conversation or unwind the problem, I promise you that that deep wound will fester and become more problematic. This is how we make our lives harder on ourselves. We inflict pain on ourselves because we have rules in our head about how things should be. Like, for example, I notice that I have policies, procedures, rule books, and directions that I must follow. Like, whatever you want to call them, they seem perfectly reasonable at the time, but we, like, make rules for ourselves. For me, my rules used to be... um, I would assign a certain number and type of essays in a given semester because I had a whole bunch of mental rules about what was expected of me as a high quality teacher. And the result of that was that I created a lot of more work, a lot more work for myself. I was constantly grading and I resented the job and I resented the students and I resented the grading and I resented the work, even though I loved teaching. And even though no one else told me I had to do it that way, I had created some rules for myself that were making my life harder. So these are the ways that we make our lives harder and they steal time from us. Let me give you another example. A friend of mine told me, this was a few years ago, that all three of her children have to be in swim lessons at the same time because it would make her life easier. And even one of her children, even though one of her children was like a six month old infant and the others were like three and four, she was like, they all, we all need to go at the same time together so everybody can have their swimming lessons at the same time. And she would not consider any other option. And the interesting thing about this thing that would make her life easier to have everybody there and taking swimming lessons at the same time was she could not find a place that would do that. And so she wound up never getting exactly what she wanted. So she just didn't do the kids in swim lessons that summer. So that summer, she wound up 
at her in-laws pool trying to wrangle all the kids. Like she's got the infant in her hand and the, and the three and four year old, like they, they're not allowed to get off the steps because they don't know how to swim. And she made her life a nightmare because she had this rule in her head about how things had to be. How much easier would her life have been if she had kind of given herself a break and said, you know what? The six month old doesn't need swim lessons this year. I'm just going to get the littles, the three and the four year old swim lessons, and I'll make my life easier that way. Like she just had these rules that she would not break for herself. And ultimately she broke herself that summer. So if you feel like you're constantly running out of steam or you're running out of time, it might be because you are making life harder than it has to be. Now, I will tell you, this is one of the most challenging lessons that my clients have to learn when they finally decide to bring their idea to life. It's really painful to admit that you've been making your own life harder. It's much, it's much easier to blame others and to complain, but that victim mentality will keep you from having the thing that you want. So it's not a joke that this is happening to you. It's real. And when you get into the right mindset of how can I make my life easier? How can I make my day easier? If you just ask yourself that question in the beginning of the day, you start to break the habit. You start to change the mindset. Making your life hard is merely a habit. It's a habit and it can be overcome. But who will you be when you break that habit? I'll tell you who you'll be. You'll be a woman who can get more done because she actually has less to do and she's still valuable in the world and she deserves to have more ease. All of us deserve more ease. You'll be a woman who's present and happy for her friends and her family and her colleagues and herself. Who will you be when you break this habit? I promise you will like yourself so much more. You will like your life so much more because being busy is a way of hiding. And being busy and, and having too much to do and taking on too much is a way that we stay small. It keeps us down. And I know that it feels good in the moment to just do the thing, to just say yes, to just take care of it yourself. It feels good to have these rules and regulations for yourself, but it's holding you back. So are you ready to stop making life harder and create more time? and be more productive, and be more efficient. Because if you're ready to break that habit, I promise I will teach you how. And it's not painful, and it doesn't involve like hours and hours each day. It actually involves mindset shifts. This is the number one lesson that I teach in my group coaching program. And it's like, when people get through that first module, they're like, oh my God, I see it now. I see how I'm making my life harder. And the changes that they implement immediately are mind-blowing. So. If you're ready to break that habit, come on over to the idea space and join the group program. These are women in the women in there never believed that they could have what they currently have. They never believed they could have more time. And you can learn more about who they are and see their successes at jenliddy.com forward slash idea space. And I promise you that in three short months, your life can feel completely different. Um, are you making your life harder by not making a choice to? Invest in yourself, time, money, and energy. Because if you do, I promise you can have a different life, a calmer life, a life where you just have so much more time. How would that make your life better? I want you to think about that this week. So think about where you're making your life harder and don't judge yourself for having done it. But once we know it, we can start to move forward and everything changes. Thank you for listening all the way through. I will see you back here next week where I'm going to keep talking about another way that we can have more time. I'll see you then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week, and remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye!